If you find that this message has been a blessing to you, please take a moment and share with someone. Thank you. Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. It seems as the time draws near and as we get closer to the culmination of all things, we're coming to the front, to the head, we're coming to the apex, the climax of all that we see written in the scripture. That Satan, that serpent, that old serpent, that he is absolutely relentless and he is determined not just to destroy the souls of the unsaved. He's already got them but he is absolutely determined. Not only is he determined to destroy the church, but it's scripture says he's before the woman as a dragon, not as a serpent, but as a dragon in all his power in all his wrath and anger, he stands before the woman, the church, and his objective is to devour the man-child, but the ch- he thinks it's a child, but it becomes a man-child, and he's not able to devour it. But after he realizes he can't devour the man-child, then he goes after the woman, persecute her, and he, when, when he realizes he can't devour her because God's protecting her, Then he goes after the remnant of her seed. Are you listening? But he's absolutely determined to destroy the righteous seed. Are you listening? When Satan attacks, when he goes in for the kill, when he bites you, The result is always, always, is corruption. Are you listening? It will always lead to corruption. And it's not a corruption that has to take a long period of time, like a piece of fruit that's rotting. It doesn't have to take a long time to become completely rotten. The serpent's bite is uh, going to produce corruption very quickly because he doesn't bite you in the foot or in the hand. Are you listening? He doesn't bite you in some part of your body. Are you listening? He bites you in your mind. He goes after your mind. He's going in for the kill. Are you listening? He knows that if he can destroy your mind, that he can destroy you. Amen. That's why we have a lot of folks in this hour committing suicide because of that poisonous bite. Genesis chapter 3, beginning with verse 1, if you like to follow in the reading of God's word, let's open in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that every single day you wake us to give us, Lord, your words, 
that your people need to give us that meat in due season. Lord, we thank you so much for helping us to stay ahead of this thing, that we don't need to be falling short. We don't have to be ignorant of the enemy's devices, Lord. But we can be overcomers in this hour, more than conquerors. That we can be not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Dear God, Lord, we ask you to help us. We're no match, Lord, for the devil and ourselves. But he's no match for us when we are in you. When we are depending on you, Lord, he's no match for us. Ask, Lord, that you bless and you anoint this message as we give instruction, Lord, and even admonish your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The serpent's bite began at the word, yea. Are you listening? The rest of it's poison. The bite is yea. Anybody out there listening? The the Hebrew word for yea means ascension. You see, the same pride the same arrogance that is in the serpent is now in Eve. She's getting lifted up. She's becoming proud. She's becoming corrupted. Amen. That word, yea, that's how Satan approaches us. He doesn't approach us with something negative, right? No. He approaches us with, yea, this is good. Huh? It means ascension. Same thing he said. I am will ascend. Right? I will ascend. That's the same Hebrew word that we get in the scriptures. Not the same exact Hebrew word, but it means the same thing. Allah. Allah means to go up, to ascend. Satan is preparing an army with his poison. He's corrupting every person he can corrupt. Amen. In this scripture, we see that Eve is becoming corrupt. She has been bitten by the lethal, deadly, poisonous bite of Satan, the serpent. I mean, no, the devil is not your friend. Amen. He he is not out to help you. Amen. Amen. He's out to help himself. To destroy you is to help himself. 
Amen. Now, he may use you until he's done with you. But his ultimate objective is to destroy you. And that's who he is. He's a destroyer. Amen. So understand, it wasn't everything that the serpent said to Eve that was the bite. The bite was the very first word she began to listen to. Yay. Remember, Satan, he comes as an angel of light. Right? Yay. You want to ascend? You want to be illuminated? You want to be wise? Listen to me, he says. I know something. Now, he didn't say, I know something God doesn't know. He said to Eve, God doth know. Huh? God knows. In other words, he was saying to Eve, God's keeping something from you. Amen. You ever feel like that? God's trying to keep something from you? Well, that's what Eve felt. That's what she was dealing with. God's keeping something from me. Yeah, he's keeping you from something. He's trying to protect you. He's trying to protect you, Eve. He's trying to keep you safe. He's not trying to keep you from something that's good. He's trying to keep you from something that's evil. Amen. I mean, how many know the tree of knowledge of good and evil is a mixture of good and evil? And God was trying to keep Eve and or Adam and Eve from the evil in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But how many know even knowledge, Paul said, puffeth up, makes you to ascend. So knowledge in of itself is not good, even, by itself. Knowledge puffeth up. That's why God provided the tree of life, to go directly to the source. Eternal life. Wisdom. To be able to discern between good and evil. But they never partook of that tree of life. Are you listening? So the serpent asks Eve, after he poisons her, now he's filling with the corruption, getting her mind corrupted, and he asks her the question, Hath God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now the woman is having a conversation with the serpent. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, Listen, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Did you hear that? She said, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Well, wait a minute. I thought there were two trees in the midst of the garden. Do you see what's happened? She doesn't even know the difference now between the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She's become corrupted. Eve, isn't there another tree in the midst of the garden called the tree of life that you have yet to eat of? Isn't that like a lot of people today? Amen. The scripture says they call evil good and good evil. And that's exactly what happened once they partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, that which was good, them being naked and being the only two humans on the earth and being a married couple, that was good in the eyes of God. He created them that way. But now, and and because they're looking through the eyes of, of, of evil eye, right? They're looking through Satan's eyes. They are both corrupted, they're both poisoned, and they now are seeing that their nakedness is not good. How is it that something good became evil? 
Well, that's what Satan does. He twists. And he makes that which is good evil and that which is evil good. In, in Satan's kingdom, everything that is evil is good. And everything that is good is evil. Are you listening? Now, now we're going to get into the meat of the word. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. A few things I want you to see in this. Did Eve add to the word? Is there anywhere in the scripture that God said, you, you shall not touch it? I've, I've heard there are those that believe that way. I've read on, on the internet different people that have said that, that. That Eve added to God's word. But my understanding and my own experience in the Lord is when God gives me a word, oftentimes he gives me understanding beyond that word. Is it so difficult to understand that when God said to Adam and Eve, or said to Adam, because he didn't say it directly to Eve that we know of, Adam taught his wife what God taught him. And uh, there's no indication in the scripture that when God spoke to Adam, said, don't eat of this tree, that he didn't give him full understanding, full knowledge, that he was saying, don't even look at it. Don't even reach towards it. Because if you look up these Hebrew words, you'll find that that's exactly what the Hebrew words mean. It means to reach for, to reach in the direction of. So God is saying, never mind eating of the tree. Don't even look in its direction. Don't even, don't even be tempted. Don't, don't even allow the devil to tempt you. Even think about it. That's the understanding I'm getting. So when she said this to the serpent, she's giving him the full knowledge of what her understanding was about that tree. But she's so mixed up now, and she's so corrupted now by the serpent's bite. You know, folks, listen to me. This is a lot like someone on a drug. Are you listening? They can't fully, they're not in their right mind. They're, they can't fully understand what's going on. They're, I mean, you got to understand, Satan was seducing Eve. He had her under his control. He was manipulating her. He was seducing her. He was beguiling her. And she was divulging all that she understood about the tree. It's kind of like when Samson was laying in the lap of Delilah and he told her all his heart, told her the secret of his power, his strength. Are you listening? So I don't believe that, that God didn't give Adam the full understanding of the danger of even reaching towards that tree and touching the tree, uh, tree or touching the fruit. Even in the New Testament, the Bible says, touch not, taste not, handle not, right? And we see in the New Testament scripture, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So we see that happening here with Eve. But the one word I want us to really look at here and I believe this is where a lot of God's people are right now. Is that word lest in the original Hebrew? 
lest ye die. Has anybody ever taken the time to look up this word lest in the Hebrew? It means by chance, pre-adventure. It means to be uncertain. That's right. Now, was she certain before the bite of the serpent? Are you listening to this preacher? Before she was bit, before she become corrupted, was she certain of what God had told her husband and told her through her husband? Oh, yeah, I believe so. And you know why I believe that? Because until the serpent came into the picture, they never partook of that tree. They stayed away from it. They stayed away from that tree in so much so that they never even went near the tree of life because it was in the midst of the garden with the tree of knowledge. They were so afraid. They believed what God had said. They stayed away from the center of that garden altogether. They didn't want to look in that direction. They didn't want nothing to do with it. Just like the Bible says in the New Testament, abhor evil. Amen. In other words, I believe God put his fear in Adam, which is the beginning of wisdom. And that happens with you and I. When we first get saved, God puts his fear in us. That's the beginning, right? The beginning of wisdom is to fear God. Beginning of knowledge, to fear God. That's just the beginning of our experience with the Lord as babes in Christ. But what happens as a believer the first time we begin to listen to that old serpent? Huh? What happens? We get bit. The corruption begins to set in, right? The poison begins to flow. And then what happens? Hath God said, the same way the serpent works on us, getting us to question what God said. That's exactly what's going on today in the church. There are absolutes in God's word. Are you listening? God has set boundaries that are absolutes. And there are those that have moved the old landmarks. You know what landmarks are used for? Boundaries. God said we must stop here, live in these boundaries, but we're going to move those boundaries and live outside those boundaries and say that God is happy with us. God's pleased with us. Are you listening to this preacher? So it's we that move the boundaries. And a lot of times it's ministers, pastors that move boundaries and tell the congregation it's okay to do this. Amen. God never changes his mind, folks, to go against his own word. He may change his mind to destroy you like he did in the Old Testament with his own people. But he won't just change his mind and go against his own word. No, he changes not. God told Adam and Eve not to partake of that tree, not even to reach towards it, not even to touch it. And they had full understanding of that. But when the serpent came into the picture, all of a sudden, a command becomes lest you die. God didn't say that uh, that it would be by chance that you would die or pre-adventure you would die. He didn't say that. 
you look at the scripture, it says, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt. That's a command. That's the law of God. I know a lot of times we say, oh, well, the law of God didn't come until Moses. God's word is the law, folks. Amen. God's word is his law. And when you break the law, there's wages for that. There's a penalty for that. And it's death. Amen. So the serpent successfully caused Eve, through his subtility, to disobey and break God's law. Are you listening? She was no longer certain. She was no longer sure of the word of God. To the degree that she said, we can't eat of that tree in the midst of the garden. Wait a minute. What about that tree of life? Do you see how corrupted she had become? There is still a tree of life. Is anyone going to eat of that tree? Are you interested in eating of that tree? Are you interested in that tree of life? Why is it we're so interested in the tree that we're not supposed to be partaken of? It must be that the serpent is talking to somebody. Huh? Dear God. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. Paul says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. That word espoused does not mean you're married. Amen. I've espoused you. I've wooed you. I'm trying to get you to come to the marriage. That I may present you as a chaste, innocent virgin to Christ. The word chaste means to be clear, innocent. Did you know that's what the serpent was after in the garden? He wanted to destroy Adam and Eve's innocence. Amen. Now we got two fighting for the president of the United States to have that position, and both of them have no respect for innocence. Sad. Sad. He says, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted away from the simplicity that is in Christ. That word simplicity means to be innocent. Amen. Satan wants to destroy Innocence. Amen. Did you know this uh, this individual that was had his knee on this man that died? Won't go into any names or anything, but you know what I'm talking about. 
And they just recently let him go on bond, right? A million dollar bond. He didn't have to pay the million dollars, just a small percentage of it, usually 10%. But he's a free man, long as uh, he abides by their guidelines. And they asked, why are you letting him out? You know what they said? They said, because it's the law. It's the Constitution. They said, even though we've got a video that shows him what he's doing, they said he's still innocent until proven guilty by a court of law. Hello. If that man is innocent, are you listening? And he supposedly in the eyes of the people is not innocent. We don't know, right? We've seen the video. You can make your determination based on the video if you want to. It's not going to be up to you anyway, though. It's going to be up to the justice in this world. It's going to be measured. It's going to be estimated. It's going to be a judgment based upon people on this earth. It's not going to be your judgment unless you're part of the jury. But how many know the Lord is judge, jury, and executioner? Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. He has the last word, the final word. Satan wants you to be guilty in the eyes of God. That's what he wants. Amen. And he knows if he can bite you, corrupt your mind, make you think, even though you may not be doing something wrong, but make you think you are. How does he do that? Well, how did he get Adam and Eve to believe that them being naked was evil? That they had to be ashamed for being naked? Anybody out there listening? Satan seeks to corrupt your mind. You know, probably one of the greatest tactics Satan uses today is this idea, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Because if you're, in your mind, if you're a sinner, what are you going to do? You're going to sin. I wonder how many that believe they're truly saints They're innocent. They have no guilty conscience because of the blood of the Lamb. And they are virgins. I wonder how many of them have the the mentality that I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I wonder how many of them sin a little bit every day or sin quite often. I don't think so. I don't think those that see themselves as saints of God, those that are chaste virgins to Christ, I don't think they see themselves as sinners anymore. That's probably why they don't sin. See how Satan works, people? He corrupted Eve's mind. He corrupted Adam. And yeah, their eyes were open, all right. But their eyes were open to what? They were seeing through Satan's eyes. Amen? They're no longer seeing through God's eyes anymore. They were no longer innocent. Amen. Satan wants to destroy 
your innocence. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verse 4. And this I say, Paul the Apostle, this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Praise God. What does the word do? When we receive the word of the Lord, what does it do? The washing of the water of the word, what does it do? It cleanses. We're being regenerated. We're being cleansed. We're being cleaned. See, the guilt is being removed. Praise the Lord. That's what Jesus' words do. They remove the guilt. Amen. That's called forgiveness, people. That's called deliverance. Those that are going to be presented before God's throne that are faultless, without fault, they're innocent. That's not just something metaphorical. They literally have been washed. They're just as righteous as God is righteous. They're holy. Amen. Praise the Lord. But see, Satan's words, they're corrupt. His words make everything corrupt. And it just becomes one big mixture. You can't tell the difference between good and evil. It's no longer black and white. Now there's a gray, right? And how do you tell the difference between black and white when it's gray? You can't. Amen. See, in Christ, there is no gray area. There isn't. In fact, in Christ, there is, in God, there is no darkness at all. It's only light. In Satan's kingdom, it's a mixture. Do you see what happened? Eve couldn't tell the difference between good and evil. She couldn't tell the difference between the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life which is the same thing that's happening to God's people today. Constantly leaning to our own understanding and listening to the serpent instead of partaking of the tree of life. How do you partake of the tree of life, brother Joseph? He said to him that overcometh, right, will have the right to the tree of life. When you walk in the spirit, when you live in the spirit, When you mind heavenly things. When you live by the fruit of the spirit. Or the fruit of the tree of life. When you have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. The tree of life people. Wholesome words. According to Proverbs, the fruit of the righteous, that's the tree of life. According to the book of Revelation, the tree of life is planted in the river of life. The river of life is the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. The wisdom from above is pure. It's pure, innocent. And the wisdom from below is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Why is it that God's people are doing the same thing that Eve did? Why are they doing the same thing that Adam did? Why? 
Well, I think Paul tells us right here. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Amen. You know what they're teaching today? That guilt comes from Satan. That's what they're teaching today. Guilt comes from Satan. They're teaching that condemnation comes from Satan. Do you know where guilt and condemnation came from? And where it still comes from today? It comes from the law, people. It's the result of disobedience. Hello. Satan's objective was to get Eve and Adam to disobey God. How many know the serpent wasn't altogether after Eve as much as he was after Adam? Huh? She's the weaker vessel. I'm going after Adam. You see, Satan's not so interested in the congregation today, the church as a whole. He's after the leaders. He's after the teachers. He's after the pastor. Because those are the teachers, right? If you can corrupt the leader, if you can corrupt the teacher, you I mean, hey, listen, if you can corrupt the leader of a country, you can cor- corrupt the whole country. Hey, Amen. How do you do that? Well, just be lawless. Hey, Amen. And then the whole country will say, hey, well, if he's not going to do it, we're, we're, you know, if he's not going to abide by the Constitution, then we won't. And what do you have? You have anarchy. You have lawlessness. Amen. But see, when you do have those that are law-abiding citizens, when you have those that no matter how corrupt other people become, that are not willing to go the way of the crowd, they're not willing to go the way of the mob, right? They're not going the direction of mob rule. They're not going to be corrupted. Now, that's just on a natural level. Those that are moral, you know. But what about when you have righteous people? The righteous, God-fearing, peculiar people on the earth a holy nation that not only are they lawful in the natural, but they're lawful in the eyes of God. Amen. To the degree, like Jesus said, Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. Jesus was tempted in all points, yet without sin. Amen. When you have those that are righteous, even when the world is corrupt, those that are righteous in the eyes of the Lord, then you have someone like Peter that says, we ought to obey God rather than men. When the world seeks to corrupt the ways of Christ in the minds of the people, and that's what's going on right now, then we must stand with Christ and say like Peter, I ought to obey God rather than men. Notice what happens after Paul deals with this bite of the serpent, the subtility of the serpent, the corruption. 
Look, look what happens. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Dealing with the serpent, dealing with the serpent's bite, dealing with the poison and the corruption of Satan. He that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Who is this Jesus? That is not the Jesus of the Bible. Another Jesus. Lawless. It's a Jesus that allows and promotes lawlessness. In fact, they call it rebellion and say it's a good thing. Anybody listening? Did Jesus ever teach rebellion? Do you know anywhere where Jesus taught anarchy to his disciples against the government of that day? Did Jesus rise up against Rome? Hello. No, he he made it very clear, didn't he? Through his apostles, live peaceably with all men. Amen. Without peace and holiness, no man shall see the Lord. No, Jesus never taught anarchy. He laid his life down. Literally. He said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down of myself. When they came to arrest him in the garden, he said, I could call the angels right now and they would deliver me. But he didn't come for that reason, did he? He didn't come to destroy men's lives. He came to heal. He came to deliver. He came to save. The day is coming when he will destroy the wicked. He will destroy his enemies. But as far as I understand, we're still under grace. We're still under that dispensation. Of grace. It's coming to an end. The door is soon going to close. But as far as I understand, we're still under grace. Thank God we are. But Jesus is talking, or Paul is talking about another Jesus. Along with the subtility of the serpent. All the way back to the garden. Another Jesus. He said, whom we have not preached. So here I see there's a, there's a Jesus that's being preached. That's promoting iniquity, lawlessness, rebellion. Amen. In the charismatic churches right there, they're calling it a revolution the leaders of these charismatic churches, a revolution. But Paul said, if you receive another spirit, another Jesus, another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, all of this is connected to the subtility of the serpent. All the way back to the garden, folks. Anybody out there listening? The same corruption from the garden that corrupted Eve and Adam still working today. That mystery of iniquity still working. Another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. Not that there is another, Paul said, but there are those that are corrupting the true. Amen. He goes on to say that Satan comes as an angel of light. And no marvel, right? Satan comes as an angel of light and his ministers transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. But what do they teach? What do they teach? About being politically correct? Throw out the Bible 
and we're going to live by the Constitution. It's all about the Constitution. Boy, the devil's very subtle, isn't he? So if Brother Joseph's not a Republican, he can't be saved. There's no way that he could be a Christian if he's not a Republican. See, that's the teaching. That is the corruption of the serpent. Because what happens is the same thing that happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. Now being naked is a shameful thing. So now, Brother Joseph, if he says he's not a Republican or a Democrat and he doesn't vote, now all of a sudden I should be ashamed? Hello. That's what I'm seeing, people. Now somehow, the measure of my holiness and righteousness in Christ is measured by whether I vote Republican or Democrat. Tell me, tell me the serpent is not speaking to somebody. When you hear the President of the United States say the Republican Party are righteous? And he has somebody that stands and promotes him and says, I'm proud to be gay. Hello. I know you don't want to hear these things. Most of you don't want to hear these things. Brother Joseph, why can't you just give us smooth words? Why can't you just tickle our ears, Brother Joseph, like everybody else does? Well, like my pastor said, because I want to go to heaven. Amen. Praise God. I want to go to heaven, people. It's not a game for me. Thank you, Lord. I remember one time, and I've shared this with you before, my pastor was in the middle of a message. He sat down, never seen him do it before. He sits down in front of the people. And he looks at them under the anointing. And he says, what? You want me to lie to you? He says, well, I'm not going to. He says, because I want to go to heaven. And he said, I hope I'm not casting my pearls before swine. Amen. My sentiment exactly, people. I hope that I'm not casting my pearls before swine. I hope somebody's listening. I hope somebody's benefiting from the truth. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to the Lamb. Folks, I'm going to tell you, it's a sad day in America when the righteous are judged based on whether they vote or not and who they vote for. Dear God, I'm voting for Jesus. As far as I can see, both parties are corrupt. Praise the Lord. I don't see any righteousness in either side. All I see is corruption, lawlessness. That's all I see. And I see predators. That's what I see. On both sides, predators. I know you just want to forget the things you've heard about the current president. Just forget it. And then you want to say, oh, well, 
he's the president of the United States. He doesn't have to be righteous. He's the one that's saying he's righteous. He's the one that's saying that the Republican Party are righteous. If that doesn't deserve a rebuke, people, you tell me what does. And I'm not talking about rebuking him. I'm talking about rebuking those that are following him. I'm not concerned about you following him as much as I'm concerned about you being corrupted by him. That's what I'm more concerned about, is that you start saying what he does is okay. Because then that changes your perception of what God expects. How many know Donald Trump doesn't change the standards of righteousness, doesn't change God's word? Amen. Most of those today that are following Donald Trump, most of them that support Donald Trump, are not living a righteous life. Amen? Somewhere you'll find they're not living a righteous life. They're missing it somewhere. And they're letting in They're letting in the poison that's allowing them to become corrupted. Amen. Praise the Lord. We see in the book of Revelation, and I'm closing, that that old serpent is going to cast a flood out of his mouth going after the church. Amen? Revelation 12, 15, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Those that are going to be left behind, the majority of the church, They're going to experience this, the strong delusion. They're going to be persecuted by the serpent. They're going to flee from the serpent. Amen. He's going to make a play for the church. But God's going to protect the church. Amen. Serpent is Satan. Make no mistakes about it. The serpent, the dragon, that is Satan. Amen. In fact, the Bible calls him that old serpent. Amen. There he is. Revelation 12, 9. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Are you listening? Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, don't get it twisted. The earth is not hundreds of millions of years old. That's part of his deception, too. Are you listening? It's only been a little less than 6,000 years since that old serpent Are you listening? Don't get it twisted. We're coming up now on the 6,000th year. Or, yeah, 6,000th year. Praise the Lord. And then there'll be another thousand years. The seventh, it'll become the 7,000 years. The last thousand is the millennial reign. We're we're coming to the end of the 6,000 years right now. Blessed be his name, people. God is true to his word. 
Amen? God is true to his word. He will not fail you and I. He will not fail us. He will not fail you and I. Amen. It's time for God's people to start looking at everything God says as a promise, because it is. Amen. God doesn't lie. And what he's promised, he's well able to perform. In the name of Jesus.